my dear students assalamu alaikum and welcome to your online class from today we are going to start a new system that is the endocrine system there are two systems in our body that controls all the others one is the nervous system and another one is the endocrine system endocrine system consists of a series of glands and these glands produce and secrete hormones these hormones controls the activity of the cells tissues and organs throughout the body they regulate the growth development metabolism and reproduction and if there is any pathology any hypersecretion or hyposecretion of these hormones it gives rise to clinical conditions so this system is very important and i will think you will find it very interesting so let's start with the introductory class of the endocrine system first we will know the definition of a hormone hormone is a chemical substance secreted by one cell or a group of cell into the circulating blood and they exert their physiological control effect on other cells of the body so these hormones are chemical substances and they secrete they are secreted from the gland and a gland can be consist of one cell or a group of cell and when the hormone is secreted from the gland into the blood it is carried in the blood it is carried throughout the blood and then it exerts its effect on other cells of the body like this is the target cell for the hormone you can see and in the target cell there are receptors for these hormones so when the horm this is the gland that is secreting the hormone into the circulating blood and the hormone is circulating with the blood and when it finds its target cell it goes and binds with the receptor on the target cell and then it initiates cell reactions here is another cell that has no receptors so this is not a target cell for this hormone so every hormone has a target cell which has specific receptors for that hormone if there is no receptor on a cell then that is not a target cell for that hormone so this is how the hormones are functioning you can see in this diagram these are the endocrine glands in our body if we start from above we have the hypothalamus the pituitary gland the thyroid parathyroid gland and the islets of langerhans of pancreas the adrenal gland uh, in case of female we have the ovaries and in case of male we have the testes and when these glands secrete the hormones these hormones go and affect their target cell suppose this is hormone a and this is hormone b and these are our cells this cell has specific receptor for hormone a but there is no receptor for hormone b so hormone b will not act on this cell only hormone a will act on this cell again this cell you can see it has receptors for both the hormones both for hormone a and for hormone b so both the hormones will have their physiological effect on this cell now let us look at the chemical classification of hormones chemically hormones are divided into three groups first proteins and polypeptides these are include the growth hormone insulin glucagon and parathyroid hormone so proteins and polypeptides that is any chain that is uh, this is the protein and uh, structure of the protein and hormones any chain that is attached with a uh, amino acid that is the protein hormone then we have the steroids steroids example include cortisol aldosterone estrogen progesterone and testosterone steroid hormones are derivatives of the lipid cholesterol and the third group is derivatives of the amino acid tyrosine these include thyroxine triiodothyronine epinephrine and norepinephrine here there is the amino acid that is attached with a carboxyl group 
so these are the three types of hormones that is uh, classified chemically so one is the proteins and polypeptides the steroids and the derivatives of the amino acid tyrosine now for these hormones there are receptors and these receptors are located some are located on the cell membrane some are located in the cytoplasm of the cell and some are located in the cell nucleus so here in this diagram you can see this is the receptor and this is the receptor for protein hormones and catecholamines so a steroid hormone will not bind with this receptor a thyroid hormone will not bind with this receptor this is specific only for protein hormones and catecholamines so protein hormones and catecholamines have their receptor on the cell membrane then the steroid hormones as their steroids are lipid soluble they can easily diffuse through the cell membrane and their hormones are located in the cell cytoplasm so steroid hormones have their receptor in the cell cytoplasm they diffuse through the cell membrane and bind with the receptor and then they start their function thyroid hormone has their receptor in the cell nucleus so you can see a thyroid hormone coming through the cell membrane the cytoplasm and it goes into the nucleus where it has its receptor and binds with its receptor so every hormone has their specific receptor and the first function of the hormone is to bind with its receptor and form the hormone receptor complex and then the effect of the hormone will start so we have to know the location of these receptors for different hormones and the number of receptors in the target cell usually do not remain constant from day to day or even from minute to minute these receptors are proteins these are cell membrane integral proteins and they can be inactivated or destroyed or reactivated or new receptors can be formed so the number of receptors are not constant you can see in the circulation the, when there is this is these are the hormones these triangle shapes are hormones and there is a decreased concentration of hormones on this side we can see that there is a increased concentration of hormones when there is decreased concentration of hormones the cell wants to catch up all the hormones so the cell increases the number of receptors so that no hormone while the hormone is circulating through the blood all the hormones are attached to the receptors all the hormones can find their receptors that is why when there is decreased concentration of hormones there is increase in the number of active receptors again when there is an increase in the hormone concentration so much hormone is not required for the cell so what the cell does is it decreases the number of active receptors because if there is many receptors all these hormones will bind with the receptor and that will increase the activity of the hormones which is more than normal so to uh, so that it does not happen that is why the cell decreases the number of active receptors so what we see is when there is decreased concentration of hormone there is increase in the number of active receptors and when there is increase in the concentration of hormones there is decrease in the number of active receptors the relationship is inverse and this is called up regulation and down regulation let us see what this is decrease hormone concentration can cause the number of active receptors to increase so when there is decrease hormone concentration there is increase in the number of active receptors this is called up regulation of receptors and this occurs the target tissue becomes progressively 
more sensitive to the stimulating effect of the hormone. Now let us see what is down regulation. Increase in the hormone concentration and increase binding with the target cell decreases the number of active receptors and this is called down regulation. When the number of active receptor decrease we are saying down regulation and receptor down regulation decreases the target tissues responsiveness to the hormone. This down regulation of receptor can occur as a result of inactivation of the receptor molecules, inactivation of the intracellular protein signaling molecules, temporary sequestration of the receptor to the inside of the cell, destruction of the receptor by lysosome or decreased production of receptors. So any of these can occur and they will their ultimate uh, target is to decrease the number of active receptors. So this is all for today. Uh, we, this is uh, the introduction to endocrinology and uh, slowly we will go into see how the protein hormones function and the mechanism of action of steroid hormones. So that is all for today. Thank you and Allah Hafiz.